Hey, welcome to part three in my ultimate Fiverr tutorial guide. Today in this section, you're watching about how to get DMs and inquiry messages. This step is crucial in going from just passive customer interest into you having a tangible hands-on way to help convert and make the sale. If you'd like to go ahead and watch the entire Fiverr tutorial and it's the whole 38 minute entirety, you can find the link to that down in the description box below. I wanted to bring this video into four individual chunks, which hopefully might be a little bit more manageable for you to tackle each topic individually. Again, this is how to get DMs and inbox inquiry messages on Fiverr, getting those potential customers to engage with you, ask the right questions, and help you learn how to optimize your gig even better. Hey, I'm Carrie. Welcome back to my channel or welcome for the very first time. All around, welcome. I'm Carrie Blogger, a career freelancer on Fiverr.com where I've been selling as a Fiverr Pro Verified Copywriter for about the past eight years. And in today's Freelance Friday video, I am so excited to be sharing with you a super in-depth ultimate guide on how to get impressions, clicks, inquiry messages, and ultimately orders. But before we can get into that, we have to announce this week's blogger of the week. If you would like to be the blogger of the week, just like Nathan Collins, all you have to do is drop a comment down below and you might get picked. Let's get down to business. Like I said, this is the ultimate guide. I'm not holding anything back. And I truly, truly believe that if you put this into action, you will be successful just like me. Big part number three, we made it you guys. Here's how to get inquiry messages. So here's where they are in the journey. They have clicked on your gig, they are interested, but they are not yet ready to take the plunge and order with you. So instead they're gonna send a message. Messages are both good and bad. Okay, um, yeah, most of the time they're, they're just good. They're good across the board because it gives you an opportunity to set the groundwork with the client and also creates a little bit of a barrier for you to prevent them from ordering incorrectly or asking for something you don't author offer, not author, <laughs> which would result in a canceled order. I'm gonna list kind of three valuable takeaways that you can get the inside scoop from three different kinds of client messages. The first is if people are sending you messages asking about your prices, they're saying, what is included in this package? How much does this cost? That is a huge clue into you that your pricing packages need work. Packages should be instantly understandable and easily scalable for them. I always recommend setting up your three packages to literally be scalable. So the way I think of it is basic is this, standard is this plus that, premium is this plus that plus those, right? The this is always consistent. It's just scaling either for length or size or extras. If your three packages look like three different services, then those three services should just be three different gigs. As clients are choosing a higher package, they should be, should be getting service that is more comprehensive, not getting a different service. Number two, if people are messaging you and asking about your experience or even questioning your credibility or like, if are you really worth that? Then you need to address that upfront in your gig description. I recommend creating a short, compelling bio up in the actual gig description, not just in like your little seller description section. And that should reinforce your experience and skills by framing it for what you're going to do for the buyer always center everything around the deliverable value that they're actually going to receive, not just talking about you in an abstract sense. And number three, if people are sending you messages asking about custom offers or asking about your availability to take on their specific project, you're golden, you guys. That is exactly what you want. Now you can confirm with them, you can recap the offer, and you can even direct them to place the order that they need to so that they are confident and ready to go. I should also note that not all buyers are going to message you, even if you put it in bold, you highlight it, you put stars around it, you slam it at the top of your gig description. Yeah, people are gonna ignore it. They're just gonna order. I have noticed that the higher your price point, that acts as a natural barrier and you get fewer unsolicited orders without people messaging you first. There are, there are two main things that you can do to nudge them in the right direction and message you first. I would say the first is to be online as much as possible. Hey, we got more than one benefit for this one because that green dot makes you look more approachable. And if someone thinks that they can get a quick reply from you, then they might be more willing to reach out to you first versus if you're offline, then they're like, eh, heck, they'll just deal with it when they see the order. And number two is to answer as quickly as possible. That response timer shows someone 
realistically how quickly you're gonna get back to them. I think your response time should ideally be one hour, no more than three max. And this is an all time average, the statistic. So yes, it really does include weekends. It includes all the time you're asleep. It literally counts the average time that it takes to reply to the first inquiry message in the inbox. And you're gonna see a little clock pop up there next to the message that you need to answer and which is being timed. So I have three quick tips. I know there's a million lists in this thing, like I said, ultimate guide. So personally, I message the people back who have the little clock timer first before going back to clients that I'm already in contact with. And this is literally just a matter of minutes here. I'm not like ignoring anyone, but that does kind of have a priority approach for me. Number two, I am firmly, so strongly and firmly a believer in a healthy work-life balance. Absolutely don't stress yourself out over this. 100% don't wake up in the middle of the night to answer your messages. You can, I do, have a blissful work-life balance and my response time is still two hours. Just make sure that you, when you are available during the day that you are being attentive and you are answering them as quickly as possible, that alone will balance the scales for those times when you are unavailable or asleep. And number three, I recommend so strongly to use the quick responses tool and set up messages that address all of the most common questions. So personally, I gear my quick response messages to the individual services that clients are inquiring about. And over the years, I have fine tuned them, I have changed them so that I can easily adjust and alter those responses by just adding or deleting like a quick section. So with that tool, I can get through a whole pile of messages literally in a couple minutes. And that's with sending complete thoughtful responses to every single person. So check out the video link in the description down below for advice about how to most effectively use quick responses as a tool for your business. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this content. I hope you found it helpful and actionable and ready to put into practice. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and drop a comment down below. I love to engage with my viewers in the comment section. And then you're so close to making it through this entire Fiverr tutorial, so don't wait. Make sure that you hop over to part number four of this ultimate tutorial series that will tackle how to ultimately get orders. Remember, <laughs> remember, please, people, you are worth more than your workload. You are. You are so important. You are so valuable. You are deserving of respect. So make sure you ask for it and make sure you earn it. Okay, let's get back to work.